probably what what I think is one of has, is one of the most effective uh, half guard sweeps I think I've ever seen for simplicity's sake and ease of setup. Um, this is a sort of a sweep that can be kind of implemented into an entire system all its own. Just kind of depends on how you want to look at this. Uh, when I first started doing this sweep, um, I kind of implemented it into its own little system and really let that revolve around kind of itself as an entire game when I first started playing it. Um, I don't play it so much anymore now, but I find that it's incredibly easy for somebody who's new to the open guard game to adjust to because it is so effective. Now it's gonna be Yi, Yi only for the most part until we move into the uh, the deep half aspect of it which can be translated into no Yi and, and several different things. Um, I never really, I always called this like a half guard lapel sweep but I think the guy that pretty much popularized it the most was gonna be Bernardo Faria. Um, he won several world titles off of this and, and admittedly I think this was kind of one of the main things that he did in his game. I mean pull half guard, hit the lapel sweep, come up, dominate on top, and that was kind of the formula that carried him to a couple world championships. Now granted, he's doing it at a very high level, but the concept was very much the same as it has been all along, and it's very basic in nature. So if you guys don't have a, uh, a really solid half guard system or a really solid open guard system that you feel like you can rely on, I would highly suggest looking at this one because it's kind of uh, able to be applied all across the board and it doesn't really matter what your body type is whether you're a bigger guy smaller guy it can kind of be hit uh, pretty much by anybody okay so um, essentially where we're going to start here is notwithstanding the half guard pull and all that which is probably one of the most important aspects of the game when it comes to um, how Bernardo does it we're just going to start here in sort of the knee shield the basic half guard now what we have to get over is we have to get out of the thought process that this is good or that this is acceptable anymore okay i think for the most part brazilian jiu-jitsu has evolved so much that this is almost entirely obsolete locking your leg on the outside okay we have so many more options i think the biggest reason why we did this back in the day is because we were afraid that somebody was just going to back away from us or they're going to try to run away well now passing sequences have got so complicated that if you don't have some sort of a of a shield in here or a frame to keep him away, you're probably gonna really, really get flattened out and get your guard press pretty quickly, okay? So I don't really advocate the use of the standard lock your leg around the, the outside. I'm gonna tell most of you guys to stop doing that. Regardless of if there's a decent system um, out there that some, I'm sure there probably is a system out there that somebody has just taken and ran with and made it fantastic, okay? The vast majority of those systems are gonna be rotating in the deep half. Um, out of this, which is what we're going to get into in the latter part of this series. Um, so I'm going to tell you guys to not use this unless you're just using it for just a few seconds to try to maybe get your hips closer and then start working back into getting a knee shield. All right. Um, there's just too many. There's just too many things that we can transition into off of this. The other main reason why I would rather you guys not lock your legs here is simply because it forces you to use an open half guard style system. It forces you to familiarize yourself with it. Uh, when you lock your leg in a triangle out on the outside of their leg, we have a tendency to want to kind of just lay and pray. We have a tendency to want to stall out there. And that's not a good thing to do. When you put your leg in front, it kind of makes him, it gives him the inclination that he's able to move a little bit more freely, makes him want to move, push the action a little bit more. And in doing so, you guys are getting to see more of the game anyway. So I'm always going to be an advocate of working open guard. Um, over closing down and locking on a half. Now that, that's not talking about full guard, but open, open guard structures I'd rather you do here. So where we go with this is when we pull our, our half guard, okay, you can, kind of, you can kind of cross your feet. Now one thing that I noticed back in the day, um, Bernardo was really good, but he had long, long legs from, from knee to ankle. So he was able to kind of, you see he's guys that are like Sergio, Justin, some of these taller guys, that are a little bit longer from knee to ankle, they can insert that knee shield just where it's supposed to be and they can cross their feet on the outside and they get that really, really good angle which is right into that lower rib cage. Okay, so the knee is gonna go right into the lower rib, not so much down low on the hip like we do with our knee shield because we're preparing to go to like that foot break and drive away and build up, it's not the same. There's gonna be a little bit more of an up, upward angle here 
What I've always told everybody to try to do is kind of imagine putting the tip of your knee right over his breastbone right here and kind of right in line this same angle right here, filling this gap where his arm would rest naturally. This is kind of the sort of the angle that you're going to use here, not down in here like this. All right. So when we get ready to go to this, filling that gap right there and kind of getting that knee at a little bit of an angle upward is sort of the order of the day. All right. The first thing that we want to do here is you want to still use this cross face, this frame across here, because if he does start trying to, to drop into you, what happens is knee's going to collapse to elbow. And this is slightly different than what we've been doing to this point, right? We're keeping our knee down and we're forming this upward frame. Well, when the knee comes inside and we cross our feet, the elbow tends to drop to the knee the higher that he goes, the more he presses into me. So this whole assembly gets collapsed. So if he continues to drive into me, I continue to take this whole assembly into me. Now, one of the things about how this guard works is you kind of want them over the top of you because you need access to this lapel. So we're gonna pull this lapel out, whether he's in this position or whether he's down on his knee, doesn't matter really one way or the other. But we need this free, okay? Don't mistake which lapel you're gonna go for. There's an issue here. If you go for this lapel, it might be long enough to actually get it down there, but one thing is hindering having really good movement out of that. What is that? My knee is pressing this gi, making it a lot tighter. Okay, so one of the first mistakes that people make is, is they, they mess with the wrong lapel. Go for the cross lapel, okay, because we're looking at trying to feed that cross lapel under. So from right here, we're actually okay with having him kind of come up over the top of us because what happens is, is we're gonna frame away and we're gonna dive underneath and feed this lapel to my hand, okay? Now we'll finish the rest of this out in a minute because there's, there's a multitude of ways that this can go from right here, okay? There's a lot of exits here. Um, depending on what he's doing, it gets very, very specific. But right now, what we wanna do is wanna kinda feed this lapel up under here and grab it with your hand, all right? Then we're gonna start looking to get this bottom side knee out, okay, and build up to the elbow. So moving back. Got my good frame here. So even I started off in a good knee shield, okay? I'm gonna let this knee ride up a little bit and I'm gonna cross my feet. So I've got that good 45 and got some good tension on his body. The lapel is gonna come out, okay? Hanging on to the lapel. If I wanna go ahead and feed it, all I have to do is pull and offset him a little bit by straightening my legs. Notice I just kind of straightened my legs. It shoots it underneath and I can grab. Okay. I am going to stay crossed on this leg momentarily and sort of let all this kind of kind of get a little loose in here. What you're going to notice is right out of the gates, he's going to drive his knee, his, his kneecap straight to the mat and kind of switch his hips. Most of the time, this is kind of what people look to do. Okay. So if you guys want to kind of rep that, switch your hips out a little bit, give them a good look because this is where we're going next. Right here. Got it? So again, first part of the series here, thumb is down. Um, I'm ready to kind of get this lapel out. It comes out. I go a little high here momentarily. If he's not gonna commit any weight over me and he wants to stay back, that's, that's a different launch. Okay, so right now, just work it where he's staying back here. All right, I'm gonna kind of offset a little bit with my foot. Notice my feet are crossed and I kind of just straighten them out. Shooting this down. Building up, catching to catching my uh, my my lapel underneath. I want to try to get to this far side leg if at all possible. Okay, because from right here we're going to rotate out here in just a minute. We're going to finish this sweep. Let's let's get after here. One, two, three. So, a um, couple unique things here. Now, one thing about this, uh, the hang up a lot of times becomes lapels. Okay, one gets, it gets shifted around, whether this one is longer on this side, this one comes out, it's longer on this side. So as you start to work this half guard, and if you ever watch anybody that's really, really good with this half guard, there's been, there's been several guys that have used this um, to great effect. One of the first thing they start doing is the disrobing. Okay, so they're, they're looking to disrobe. Um, you'll have different guys wrap their geese up differently. Some are left over right, some are right over left. 
Sometimes it's easier to get out. Sometimes it isn't. Okay. Part of is there a right or a wrong way? Not really. Left over right. I mean, left over right is the typical preferred, but okay. it's it's it also depends on how they how they do it. I mean, it just depends. So on this side, so come around this side for me, Alpha. So this one is out. Okay. Um, this one is it's nice and long. Sometimes you're going to have them where they're kind of short. Now, one thing that I like to do here is kind of to keep them at bay, I like to make use of obviously my frame, my cross collar frame here. If I run into an issue and he's really, really racking hard trying to get out of this or he's trying to back up, a lot of times I just simply grab this belt, okay? And this holds me to him, kind of keeps this. He's pushing on my hip. This keeps me kind of close to him. Notice now he's gonna have a hard time kind of backing away in the interim because I've got, I've got control of his lower hips now just because I'm grabbing the belt. So if he starts trying to run away, holding on to the belt is gonna kind of keep him, gonna kind of keep him close here. Okay, so once I come back up underneath, if the belt is that available, you can one tassel or you can two, same thing, right? I can shoot underneath with the tassel, right? Now, once I've got the tassel, I can start to extract the leg or extract the hand out. I've still got control of his hip line with the tassel up underneath, okay? So we discussed cross collar, cross lapel. Now we have the option to go to the belt tassel. Now I can guarantee you the belt tassel hangs lower than the lapel does, always, okay? Sometimes you're gonna have people that have shorter lapels and you can't feed it all the way across. Now one thing about it, depending on which way this is situated, this may be more turned this way, making this one more accessible. This one may be more accessible. It just kind of depends on your knee position. So if I'm good enough to pull this one out right here, then you can go with this one as well. It's not really specific and meaning that you can't do it because you have one over the other. Pretty much you can do it anytime you have one available to you to fish up underneath. I prefer to go for the cross collar one. Okay. Simply because it gives me that, that farther grip and effect on this side, just a little bit. Now, because I pulled this lapel out, this one is short. So if I were to try to reach this one underneath, I'd have a hard time. But if I wanna make sure that I can get this lapel out a little bit, get your good, your good distance from him, pull the knee just a little bit and yank it out. Now stick your knee back in, okay? Now you can extract the knee. Now you can dive under and you can feed same side lapel if you wanna feed one. Okay, so you have two more. Now you work on the tassel, you work on the same side lapel. Close. Okay, here we go. One, two, three. Here felt the near side collar was easier. Near side collar a little easier, okay. Uh, belt should have been one of the easiest, all right. One thing about the belt, you lose a little bit of control over the upper body, right, because um, with the lapel, we're affecting to some degree the shoulder line, somewhat, okay. So with just having the belt, I'd say that's probably your third best option. It's not gonna be your best option by, by far. I would rather have one of the lapels on the bottom. Okay, so a couple different things that, that happens here. So let's say I've gotten here, boom, and I've kicked it up, and I've fed this to myself, and now I'm kinda in this position here, all right? On my back, everybody always has issues building up. It's one of the first things that they have issues with, okay? We have a couple different choices here. Um, because I have the lapel on the backside, my first thing that I, my first inclination that I always want to do is I want to look to try to come up to my elbow, get up to my to my knees, right myself that way. Okay, so what happens is you get your legs all tied up. So let's switch this all out. So I'm going to bring this leg down. Okay, I'm going to trap his foot to the floor here. I'm going to turn and I'm going to switch. Nice, easy move right here. Most of you guys are messing up. You're trying to uh, rock yourself up, okay? Let's look back at this. This is a little something that Bernardo does not do when he does this that I can tell as far as I can tell. Uh, but when you're a big, big boy, you have an issue getting up. And believe it or not, I've had to fix this for a lot of big guys. So one of the easiest things to do is to try to get them to roll to their belly. So we're here, we're gonna switch, okay? So we go from being in this lock, which we were knee, in, knee inside, we're gonna switch. 
Now this foot has to stay locked to the floor because he is going to try to switch his hips and knee cut. So when he does that, I'm gonna catch that foot and I'm gonna straighten my leg back behind me. So now he's kind of still stuck in here just a little bit. Okay, now I'm gonna switch. I've switched my hips. Now I'm gonna build up to my elbow, come up. Now I can start to work. Okay, that nice little hip switch. Part one. So if you have built up, gotten to here, kind of locked. This is sort of a coyote sweep, okay? So I'm gonna bring the foot on the inside, take my foot out. Now, I would like to catch this knee on this side, okay? Because if I can catch this knee, there's a lot of cool stuff I can do from here. First one we just did, we switched our hips out, all right? What always tends to happen is they wanna wizard this backside. What I mean by wizard? He's reaching up under my arms. Y'all saw what he did. Sometimes they'll grab the collar up under here. Seth was just asking this question a minute ago. Let me recover because I'm talking. He was literally just asking this question a second ago. Okay. Are you worried about the Dars choke? Well, Dars means he's going to feed in underneath this arm here. Okay. Grabbing my collar, maybe coming across with, a, with some sort of a, of a backside loop choke of some sorts. Okay. When I go under here, he comes under with this hand. A lot of times we find that they grab that collar. Okay, so I switch, open up. Now I just grab the inside of his knee. Okay, so if I start to feel all this tension on my neck, I'm gonna drive forward, take him here, okay? Boom, now I'm gonna let go and I'm gonna deal with that choke. I was just answering that question for him. If it is tight, he can probably put some put some tension on it. I don't know how stinky he can make it, but he can make it tight, okay? Whether he can stop me with that or put me out with that, it's gonna be kind of tough. Angle's not great. I'm gonna ride that out to get on top and then start working to make my frames off of it and relieve the pressure, okay? So second sweep is here. Got that good old lapel. Come up underneath, kind of locked over. I grab. Shift my feet. I'm thinking about maybe building up to my knees like I did the first time, but he switches his hips really hard and heavy. If I'm holding his knee, I'm just gonna slide my knees through. Dump him. Come to the backside. Let's go ahead and secure tight. There's one thing about that little sleeve that made it so effective, and you guys are gonna try to muscle him over, flip him over. If you notice, I made a series of inches to him where I kind of got close to him. Well, yeah, we kind of, it's kind of like a clock. We went around a little bit of a position here. So I got here, he's kind of heavy, driving his knees across. So now what I do, I drive, 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 drive. We come up. Oops. Do that one, do it one more time. Huh? Please. <coughs> I'm under, switch that out, catch that foot before he can pass. Me, use my toes. Let's go ahead and pass. I got it. Here we go. One, two, three. Okay. Same principle. We're going to hop out and around. Now, this one might be a little bit more difficult for some people than others. Probably my favorite. Variation of this from here, okay? Extracting the knee. I'm riding high in that hip. Make sure you understand how this works. So if I got my knee down here and I can't pull his lapel out, I'm gonna lift up and I'm gonna go in line with his body, with my shin. I connect to my knee, so now I've got a frame across and a frame down, and now I can really work on this lapel. It's out of the way, I can yank it way out of the way. Okay, so once I get here, some of you guys are gonna find that you have a difficult time getting to the leg. So a key here is going to be that punch away. Okay, get this nice punch away. So I'm here, I've got the lapel, it's staged, it's ready to go. 
I'm gonna drive my knee and punch away a little bit. So as I punch, now my, just my fingers have to catch the back of his hamstring. Leg is gonna come out. If I can catch his hamstring, okay, I can start to kind of yank him up onto my shoulder and I can drive underneath. So one thing that I've, I've been able to do here is if I get shallow, say he's driving his shoulder into me and I wanna get up in here deeper, Notice I fed it, okay? Now I got there. I completely bailed on the ability to hit the, uh, to come up on the leg at all. Okay, so now I'm just gonna rotate up onto the knees and start working to come around and hit my double, my takedown, okay? So if you have a hard time feeding up underneath, grab, throw them up on your shoulder a little bit, push them away so you create the space. Now my, fa my favorite variation here is this. So I go to the kind of the coyote from here. From here, I've extracted that lapel high with my knee, got my feet locked. I dive underneath. And I get here and I've trapped this leg regardless of what he's doing here. Now I'm gonna put him in full blown coyote position, switch, turn him. I'm going to catch the knee. Now I'm going to rotate around his knee and come up. Okay? Just rotating around his knee. Cross. Yank. Offset. Dive and catch. Now I caught this inside pant leg. Now, switch his hips, put him in a full-blown howdy position, switch, coming up, <coughs> and let's pass. Close. Here we go. One, two, three. This against Levi Jones-Leary. Um, made it look effortless. Started in here in half. Sort of this, kind of, I guess I'd say arm bit half. Goes to try to get the gi, can't get to the gi. So instead, catches the knee from the setup on the bottom, okay? So right here, he pushes away. You can see it very plainly. Catches the knee and pushes him away and pulls this knee inside inboard. And when he pulls the knee inboard, this is what has to happen right here. Larry has to put his hand down. Well, he can't base with his knee, right? Lapree's got his knee. So what comes in next, he kicks out and he gets up here to the butt, catches, gets deep, loads, comes around and catches the belt. When he catches the belt, there's a quick switch of the legs. He just takes him over, okay? Very little movement. It's all in the setup as opposed to being so long um, in, the, in the process of the sweep. So a really, really nice setup, kind of a variation manipulation of it that does not need the lapel. Here, he goes ahead and grabs the knee in, inside where he's got a good shelf to grab. Offsets with his knee, and gets him to base out. Initially, he had his hand on the collar, okay? Bases him out here, dives under, Catches, loads, then comes around the back, pulls his leg out from under him, and takes him over the top. Oops. Clean, clean version of that sweep that I had never seen until he did it. Okay? On y'all, here we go. One, two, three.